thinking. Yeah, thank you, Matthias. And uh, uh, a meditation. But before to start, I would like to, to ask you if you have any comments or ideas or feedback about the, the last uh, Zoom. Maybe during the, the, the last days, uh, you came up something in your mind about that. Yes, Audrey? I wanted to speak, but there is someone who is coming, so I will come back to you in a few, few minutes. Okay, solve your yeah, problem you. first, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Natasha, you, you were not uh, there in the last Zoom, right? Okay. No, I was not. Yeah, okay. And uh, neither Younes, I guess. Yeah, and uh, I didn't, I don't remember Rene, neither. Yeah. So, okay. So maybe just Paola, Shamze, Matthias, and Audrey have something to say about it. Audrey, did you solve your problem? <laughs> Yeah, no, I have a wasp. <laughs> it's crazy. I have a crazy evening. Yes. Anyway, I will try to to remain calm. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, an observation about uh, last discussion. Uh, I would uh, I would speak about uh, at the attitudes, uh, the the positioning that uh, well, is especially Matthias and uh, and uh, uh, Shamsi had. Uh, I observed that uh, even if we were calm and the, the discussion was very nice and very calm and uh, we listened to each other, uh, I noticed anyway some uh, dogmatic position. Uh, it was kind of uh, a quarrel of churches and it was my, um, let's say, my fear beforehand. And I, I spoke about that with Chelsea, so he, will, he won't be surprised to hear me uh, saying that. Yeah, so there, there was a, a desire to, to defend a position, and it was difficult for uh, the defenders of each position to just to, to abdicate an idea and uh, see what was going on with uh, the, the positioning of the other one. So yes, uh, nevertheless, um, observe that no, Matthias made some, uh, made some efforts uh, even if he had hard time to uh, to see what really Shamsi uh, wants to 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 state with his uh, idea of uh, thinking uh, through meditation, or yeah, in the activity of meditation, yeah, I, I noticed that uh, he wanted to, uh, yeah, he accepted some uh, some aspects of the the, the positioning, but he uh, right, he he got stuck a little bit in. Uh, in that and Shabsi, uh, uh, it should know it now. Uh, Matthias told him uh, on Telegram. I was reading again uh, the discussion on Telegram, and obviously there is some uh, religious thinking. Yeah. So uh, I hope that uh, today the discussion will be more uh, on uh, taking one concept all together and just think about it. So meditate about it and not just defend a position yes i agree and no i disagree and yeah no okay. that's so i hope uh, i hope for that yeah okay thank you Dre. but anyway we we are going to discuss about religious thinking so it could be nice to see a performative religious thinking like during this uh, the session so why not <laughs> but to tell you i'm surprised that already it's written religious thinking since we spoke about thinking and meditation so I don't know why Matthias wrote already uh, on Telegram religious and you took it back here. Yeah. Okay, but maybe you missed, you missed something, uh, Audrey, because uh, the in the during the exchange that Matthias and Shamsi had, they Matthias I think uh, made this observation or this criticism about religious thinking, yeah, in uh, Shamsi position. And the, the the last time we didn't have time, let's say to face this part of the topic. So that's why we met again this time. Yeah. Yeah, but, okay, okay. But let me understand. So your idea was that uh, you found a, dog a dogmatic position, both uh, 
uh, in Shamsey uh, side and Matthias side or or yeah okay yeah, both okay interesting so it's a it's a nice way to start a, a meeting about religious thinking yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> okay but uh, okay any other comments about the last uh, last time yes Mattia are you surprised that uh, you... <laughs> For Audre, you were uh, defending your idea as a religious uh, person. <laughs> um, I'm not entirely surprised, no. Okay. But I, yeah, I, okay, I think we were not as dogmatic last time as we were on Telegram. I think <laughs> we were more dogmatic on Telegram. We made some concessions last week. Uh, yes, indeed, we did not give up our positions. I think we mainly kept our positions but i think we listened more to each other than we did on telegram so so yeah some some move towards that and yes indeed i accused shamsi of having a religious attachment to meditation and i agree i have a religious attachment to to reason so i guess we're both religious <laughs> in that sense so it's it's interesting to discuss this religious thinking today Okay, so you agree with Audrey? Um, basically, yes. I, I didn't see so much dogmatism last week, as she saw, but but yes, I, I get her point. So let's say that in general, you agree with uh, that you 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 admit that you have this religious ten tension uh, about about a reason, let's say. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You didn't notice so much last time. Um, yeah, I, I notice it. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I didn't think last time was very dogmatic, even if we, we, yes, we didn't give up our positions, but I think we still, we listened to each other and we, yes, we yeah. accepted some, some points from, from the other. I think both of us did. Yes. Uh, I, I would say that I, I, I saw less, uh, rigidity last time than in the exchange in the telegram chat uh, a few weeks ago yeah it was a more peaceful and a bit more flexible even if uh, you remain in the same position maybe maybe you had more opportunity to see the other point of view let's say and uh, the other yeah okay so okay thank you um someone else before to start Shamsi, maybe you want to say something? Well, I I also didn't see uh, dogmatism in the in the last um, in the last uh, conversation that we had or the workshop that we had. And if I understand uh, Audrey correct correctly, then defending a position equals dogmatism and this i i would see differently so i think uh, matthias and i just um clarified and came to a better understanding but still there was reason enough for both parties to keep their position and i wouldn't call that dogmatism because dogmatism for me is if you claim something without solid evidence just for the pure yeah, rigidity of your thoughts, for instance. Okay, so your idea is that it's possible to defend a position without being dogmatic about that, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Want to add something? Shamsi? No? No. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, you have, a, I don't know, if Paula or Dennis that uh, uh, want to add something about the last time, and then uh, we can uh, uh, start with the real session. Paula, you have us. Uh, okay, Dennis, no, nothing. Okay, okay. So let's start from that. Uh, we uh, Shamsi, I think, uh, brought up already a nice, in this interesting point that defending doesn't imply necessary a dogmatic position. But let's start from uh, uh, Matthias because I think it was uh, Matthias that uh, pointed out this uh, criticism. Let's say in Shamsi, in Shamsi position in the Telegram chat. So maybe uh, um, Matthias. 
you can rephrase or you can remind us uh, why you said that about uh, um, Shamsi, Shamsi position. And uh, maybe you could remind us also what the religious uh, thinking is. Um, yes. Um, okay, so religious thinking here, yeah. um, as I see it, it, it's not just about having a religion or believing in God. So religious thinking would more be, uh, well, dogmatic thinking is one type of religious thinking where you are not open to reason, you are not open to change your position, and you don't accept to be challenged about your ideas, because for you, these ideas are sacred to you. So to challenge or question your ideas equals heresy, and that must be defeated, that must be fought against. So that, that would be one type of religious thinking, but religious thinking could also be when you have an idea about something which is beyond, let's say, beyond reason, beyond words, it's more of an experience which you cannot really talk about because uh, words are not enough or perceptions are not enough. It's somehow beyond, um, yeah, beyond the corporeal, beyond the mundane, beyond the everyday experience it's something other something yeah beyond the clouds or something which you cannot really grasp in this case it doesn't have to be dogmatism but you have an experience which you uh, cannot really share with someone else you cannot really talk about it with someone else because it's uh yeah beyond the powers of words beyond language beyond concepts beyond what you're able to to rush reason about so that i would also see as a as a type of religious thinking a religious connection and i think what i perceived in what shamsi wrote in telegram was more the second case where i thought he had this kind of religious connection to meditation, that it was something beyond, something, some kind of mystical experience, which is, which he said himself is beyond words, beyond concepts, beyond interpretation. So I saw that as a type of, type of religion, not really, not in a traditional religious sense, maybe, but it's a type of, it's a sort of religious idea, religious, uh, connection, religious feeling you have about this thing. So I think okay. that was basically my idea. Yeah, okay. By the way, Shamsi, did you read the, the text that Matthias uh, uh, wrote, uh, I think, uh, two years ago, something like that, about uh, non-religious, uh, not religious, uh, uh, what was the title, Matthias, about your text? It was really interesting. It was the non-religious religious. Yes, okay. The non-religious religious, yes. Did you read it? Okay, so may maybe after the meeting, uh, Matthias, you could share the, the text with Shamsi, and it would be interesting for him, I think. And, and may also for others uh, who are interested. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, that was uh, Matthias' idea, uh, from which, uh, uh, let's say, other exchange started. And maybe, Shamsi, you want to reply. Yes, and uh, I actually would need a Google Doc. Do you would would you like to prepare one? Because I, I, I did already. I just forgot to share. It's here. Because I did some preparation. Oh, you have a lesson, Shamsi? Well, just a quick one though. Okay, nice. <laughs> just a quick one, yeah. So, um. So I guess it can be helpful to understand the different, uh, let's say, use cases for um, for meditation to see why I wouldn't call it religious thinking when I talk about or the, the, the way that I do and um, think about meditation. So as you can see here in the Google Doc now, there's the secular approach. This is what we did last time. 
more or less. Yeah. So it is a secular meditation where you focus on the object or, your, for instance, your breath or your body. Your objective is um, rather mundane. This is what uh, Kate was talking about last time. Yeah, you uh, strive for less stress, better focus, more awareness. An example could be the mindfulness-based stress reduction. Yeah, so there's no mystical or, or uh, spiritual thing that is uh, part of it. Now, and then there's another type of meditation that I would indeed call religious meditation. So in that religious meditation, what people strive for in particular is an altered state of consciousness yeah, you can also use psychedelics, you can use drumming or chanting or dancing to achieve this altered state of consciousness. And the objective is oftentimes to have some kind of unification of your soul with God or the universe. Yeah, so it's like you become, uh, one becomes non-dual. That's the idea here. Yeah, so you, you go, you become one with God or the universe. Example could be here Christian mystics, yeah, Meister Eckhart, for instance, the German uh, mystic, or the Sufis, yeah, with their um, dance. Also, Hinduism has some of this tradition. And here, thinking goes into the direction of a description of the experiences of oneness. They try to use to describe this, um, this, this experience of oneness on the one hand. And on the second hand, they also do the work of interpretation regarding God. So what they experience, they experience as God. It's a, um, a bit of a metaphysical claim, which is based on faith. So from their subjective experience, they make a reference to the absolute. Now, the third and last category, and then I can end my speech here, is what I would call a spiritual meditation. So on spiritual in, in the realm of spiritual meditation is the focus on the illusion of self. Yeah, so the objective is more or less to discover the impermanence and emptiness of all phenomena in your consciousness. So here it's not that you become uh, non-dual, it's about to discover non-duality. Examples are, for instance, Buddhism and Advaita Vedanta, which is a Hinduistic tradition. Here, thinking is also an, an, a used to describe experiences of emptiness, which go beyond words. But there is no interpretation regarding God or the universe or the absolute. It's more um, about consciousness that you can ex that, it, that you experience based on empirical and logical evidence. And therefore, I do not think that my reasoning here or my thinking is religious okay okay let me understand so basically the difference between the secular meditation the religious one is uh the let's say the, the object in the secular meditation you you focus on uh, something which is part of the say the reality like the breath for example uh, in the in the religious one, instead uh, you focus more in something beyond, like uh, I don't know, God that you try to to reach somehow, right? Yes, an altered state of consciousness. Yeah. Okay. So, but the difference between the second one and the third one is that uh, in the in the religious, you try to become, uh, you, you try to unify with God, let's say, and in the spiritual one, you you. Basically, you just observe your non-duality, but you don't try to go beyond this, right? Right. It's nothing that you achieve. It's something that you discover. You discover that everything is empty in your consciousness, that it has, um, well, the, the idea of emptiness is a pure Buddhistic, uh, a Buddhist philosophy. And it's nothing, it's not about altered state of consciousness, and it's not about to have less stress, but to rather see what they call the reality which indeed has some kind of, or the taste of an absolute saying that at the end, it's all consciousness that you can, that that perceives and everything else is just empty of its own existence. Okay, okay. But do you think it could be possible to have a, a religious relationship with spiritual meditation, for example, or no? 
Well, based on the definition that Matthias proposed, I would say I would say no, because in the spiritual tradition, this is something that you can experience. It's nothing that you believe and it's nothing that you infer. So whatever you experience, you don't say it's God. You don't say that your soul unites with everything, with something else. And it's not based on faith. It is something that you experience and that you can logically deduct. And if someone finds a hole in your logic, logic reasoning, then you have to come up with a better theory on it. Okay, so your answer is no, it's not possible to have a, I mean, based on the Matthias definition, it's not possible to have a religious relation with spiritual meditation, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Just to make clear the point. Uh, okay, maybe someone want to say something about that. Yeah, Dennis? Yeah, Um I think I have a problem with the last uh, conclusion. Um, I can understand that if you yourself have had these experiences during meditation and you're following this spiritual path, then uh, this religious thinking is maybe it's it's absent or it's not necessary. But m most people, they seek the experience, but they have never found the experience. And uh, in this seeking and wanting this experience, uh, it's still a theory. For most people, it's theory. It's They heard it from someone, and they also want to experience it. And then you can fall into the trap of religious thinking, because you believe these people who had these experiences, and you want the same. So uh, only the people who have had these experiences maybe are free of this notion of religious thinking, because they they have no need to to defend the truth, so to speak, for them. Because it's a living truth. Okay. But for others, it's not. So, so Dennis, your idea is that in order to have that experience, first, uh, you need to believe that uh, it's possible to, to have that experience. And you believe maybe other people that tell you about that. Or, no? Well, yeah, I think most people first have to believe. Well, yeah, maybe there's other people who just tried it and they had an experience or... Uh, often some experience does they just happen to us we don't really seek them out but there's a lot of people who, who seek these experiences on purpose and they go to strict regimen to with strict meditation to 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 find this experience but they never reach it okay uh, you would say then that uh, even the spiritual meditation implied a form of be belief or no, or maybe in some mo most cases. Or in, you... in most cases, I think so. Yes, yes. Because oh, okay. most people, in, especially in the West, they always talk about benefits of meditation. They don't do it for the sake of meditation. They seek it as a means to a higher ends. So most people, they believe there's a higher end to it. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dennis. So, uh, Shanzi, from Dennis' point of view, is quite possible and. Um, it's, let's say even probable that uh, people who approach uh, or are in the third category, they can uh, have a, a tendency of believing, let's say, or religious thinking. What do you think about this idea? Um, I think if you use Dennis' definition, then going to the gym for the first time to gain some muscles is a belief. Basically, everything you do for the first time, which you have not experienced yourself, is some, uh, is based on some sort of belief. So we can call everything we do for the first time, for a reason, as religious approach. And here I see it's a bit too general. So therefore, I would not, I would not uh, see the, um, well, I don't see the benefit of bringing in the idea of religious thinking for the last for for. for trying things for the first time okay okay uh yeah it's an interesting objection let's say to his objection <laughs> so i will go back to dennis then. <laughs> i don't think it's about the first time because it's not about it's about the when you go to the gym you expect to gain muscle which is very scientific i mean you can see it huh? it's the evidence is right there but with this 
form of meditation, you seek an experience that no one can see, uh, but only the, the subject can experience and maybe can tell in words to others. So others have to just believe it. With the gym and with all the other things, we can see it with our own eyes. So it's more grounded in our senses. And with this, it's just a belief. We have to believe them on their words that they experienced it. So I, I, I think is a very different thing to try meditation or go to the gym. Okay, so you made a distinction here, uh, Dennis, uh, in, in a way that, that is not evident that experience that Shazmi is talking about in the third uh, category. And plus, prob probably it requires more time, so it's, it's quite difficult to reach that experience. And in, in, in that time, probably that the person has to adopt, uh, adopt a kind of uh, religious scheme, a uh, belief. That's your point, right? Yes, uh, yes, because most a lot of people meditate and they never reach this state. So it's still, I, I mean, I've been meditating for years, but I've never experienced it like this. So you practice the meditation, Dennis, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And so you, you, uh, do you find yourself in the, let's say, the three categories that Shamsi offered to us uh, as distinctions or no? Yeah, I can see these three. Uh, yeah, I like, yeah. Okay, and about the third one, you 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 experience that uh, that observation of uh, your non-duality, let's say. Oh no, you st you're still uh, seek seeking, you're still searching. Well, I'm just doing it. I'm 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 not. <laughs> that's you know the people I I, I meditate with my my uh, the one who's like our little guru. He just said, you just do it. Don't think about the, uh, the results or what it, it's about doing it. You just do it and that's it. So uh, that's what I do. And of course you have experiences, but not like supernatural experiences or these mystic experiences. I've never had that, no. Well, it, yeah, Dennis, let, let me ask you, is it possible that you have a, a very high expectation about that experience? Because like your guru says, maybe you just do it and maybe it's not the... The biggest ecstasy of your life, but in a way, you are doing that experience anyway. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, I think <laughs> the <laughs> expectations might be too high. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so in a way, you are uh, you do meditation and and with uh, with a perfectionist scheme. Let's right? say like you expect too much. Maybe, yeah, could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. And uh, Shamsi, uh, what what do you think? Yeah, based on Dennis' speech, I would also accuse him of uh, striving for the religious meditation. Yeah, some having high expectation of a supernatural state. That's all that goes to the religious meditation, but it's not part of the spiritual meditation because um, discovering the uh, that there's just consciousness is not a blissful state, not necessarily. Yeah, so it's just it's just a form of realization, but it's not an altered state of consciousness. This is the one thing. And the second thing is if you, um, well, if you, he, I like the idea that there is, that you can use your senses to see some physical proof. If you go to the gym and you see the, the changes of your body or you see some, some trainer. And yet again, if you see people who meditate for a long time, you also see that they are very calm, that they have some equanimity for instance so again you can also see the results of their meditation tradition or their technique so therefore i would say it's it's, it's again not a strong objection to um yeah to the differentiation between religious meditation and spiritual meditation okay uh, uh, by the way, you're, uh, at the beginning you said basically that Dennis, even if he does experience the spiritual meditation, even if he's not aware, is uh, searching uh, for the religious experience of meditation. That was your point, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me check with Dennis because he's getting funny here. <laughs> Dennis, it's is true that uh, you, you want a religious uh, meditation experience? Um, it's not that I want, but I think that I expect even the way people talk about the spiritual uh, experience of, of meditation, they, they speak in, in, in words that 
conjures up an, a very big thing to me. And you believe uh, that, I guess, right? And and uh, and if if the, those words they sound very heavy and impactful, so then I expect something mm. more profound. Okay, so that's why your criticism before because you believe these people and. Uh, so you, in a way, you are in that uh, expectation, but you are not still able to reach that level, let's say, of meditation. So you believe in that experience, even if you are not able to do it uh, so far. Yeah, I think uh, you're right. Yeah, I think that I believe they 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 talk about something grandiose, and but like I said, I I just do it because I think it's it's nice. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I forget about the the results. Okay, okay. But you knew already about your religious tendency, right? Yes, yes. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now we can open even to other people if uh, you have something to say about this issue. I need some clarification. <clears throat> okay go ahead religious meditation to me religion is religion it has to do with social uh like when people are social organization but this is probably about meditation regarding religious feelings do i understand it right okay so you're asking shamsi are you asking mm -hmm. group yeah Okay, mm -hmm. Shazmi, Shazmi, uh, is she right or no? Yeah, so uh, religion um, as an institution is definitely something else than um, than uh, what, what's meant here. So I use the religious, the term religious, similar to what Matthias proposed. That is that there is something in the absolute that you're seeking. And here, giving the framework that you have, for instance, if you take a talk about Christianity, then it would be an experience that is religious because you come become one with God. Or if you take the Sufis, then you become one with Allah. So that's the idea of the word uh, religious. It does not mean anyone else. It doesn't mean charity or institution or social activities. It's really just about the experience and how you frame it. Yeah, okay, Natasha is more clear now. Yeah, and another thing, spiritual. Yeah. Spiritual and uh, is really just a spirit, spiritual medi meditation as well? Uh, can you rephrase the question? Because I didn't get the point. Okay. Is there spirituality in religious meditation? Okay, so you basically you don't you don't see a real distinction between the second and the third category, right? For you, spir just think yeah, the, just to make clear, for you, spirituality and religious are quite in the same field, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Shamsi. Yeah. I uh, can definitely see her point. And I think, uh, again, it's based on definition. Um, I don't have strong arguments for why there needs to be a distinction. It's I would uh, propose the idea that religion, um, that religion uh, deals with the idea of a superior being, be it God, universal, whatever, Whereas spiritual, the term that I used in this particular case, really means to ident to, to, to see that there is no soul and no, no self, but it's a definition and people might see, use it differently. So there's no strong argument. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Because I, 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 someone could say, Shamsi, that also to, to not to, to see no soul, for example, how can you, I mean, it, it seems it sounds a bit religious uh, that experience too in a way you you how can you, I mean you believe you 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 have or you don't have the soul right well mm -hmm. that's why I didn't that's why I didn't bring up the idea of the soul in the last one I just speak of the self okay yeah? and this okay. is 
So we could also call it scientific meditation because it is something that you can experience and you can um, empirically experience. It's nothing that you have to believe, but I find scientific meditation to be not really fitting. Yeah, because that's, I don't know, it does not grasp the idea, but it's for the lack of a better word that I use spiritual here to differentiate religion and God and something about metaphysical creation of the world and the absolute versus a pure experience and the logical deduction that you can make out of that or from that experience okay but let me ask you and I, I, to the group as well uh, is it possible to be spiritual let's say without being religious i'm asking anybody i see okay Eunice, you want to answer Oh, you have another yes. idea. Okay, yes. go ahead. Um, I think it's possible to be spiritual without being uh, re religious because uh, also this this is also uh, I'm I'm adding something to uh, the difference uh, between religious meditation and spiritual uh, meditation. So I can also answer that in what I'm what I'm gonna say. I think. Uh, uh, being spiritual or spiritual meditation uh, comes from uh, the inside. You are looking for something. You are thinking. It's about feelings. It's about thing about your experience. So that can you can you can have that without being attached to uh, a religion or an institution. Okay, but Eunice, uh, let, let me ask you. Uh, according to the Matthias definition of religious thinking, in the second case. You can have a religious uh, relation with your feelings, for example, with uh, your ideas or with anything you consider sacred. So in that case, uh, even the spiritual that you describe, it could be religious. You see the problem or no? Yes, but I, if I think, if I, uh, for example, think about uh, emotions, that's something that we all have. We we know that, but you can also uh, see it from a spiritual uh, dimension, like the emotions that are attached to us as human beings. So that's okay. something. Okay, let's try that to to follow that example, uh, Eunice. So try to distinguish uh, the idea of to have a. Uh, uh, spiritual relation with emotions then to have a religious relation with emotion can you distinguish these two examples or no um yeah i can okay i can do that for example um You, for example, if you are uh, if you are happy or if you're feeling happy, mm -hmm. from a religious uh, uh, point of view, you can say because you are doing God, 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 God is, uh, uh, for example, uh, good about uh, thinking good about you or gi giving you that uh, happiness, uh, uh, etc. But you can from a from a, a spiritual perspective or something that we humans share without making it religious is you're happy because of for example uh, the biological effects of dopamine and you're feeling good and it's something that's uh, that gives you a, a good energy and good vibes okay so okay. yeah yeah if i understood you correctly basically if you give uh, an explanation that implies god as a reason of emotion or happiness uh, it's religious. Yes. If, you, if you give a scientific, more scientific explanation, it's more spiritual, right? Yes. But you, you know that... Uh, you can... let, let, let me... Because, uh, let, let me... Be, uh, I mean, to, to stay to this point, because I think it's uh, interesting. You know that Nietzsche proposed that uh, the idea that uh, uh, many people have a religious relation with science. Yes. So how would you deal with this uh, <laughs> with this idea? Uh, 
I, I see I see what what you uh one uh, uh, I see that the uh, what you mean with the, that it makes it difficult that there is a, a religious side of it but I see the, uh, there is a difference between going from down to up and going from from the above uh, down uh, words okay I, I see the difference uh, too but uh, the, but the point is that you could have uh... Uh, a religious relation with both uh, with both dimension you could believe in science uh, by the way uh, I think it's a common experience we believe in science uh, usually right yes so it's possible to have a religious thinking or uh, relation with uh, emotion that are explained a biological way but they are not fully explained it's there is an explanation. Yeah, okay. okay. I, I, I see. I, I understand that. But the problem here is not the, 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 let's say, the argument that you give, the explanation, but the relation with the explanation. You see? Uh, you, you, uh, sorry, could you say that again? Okay. Well, let's try to... Who understood uh, this point? I was trying to... Okay. Dennis? Could you rephrase the, the point and then, yeah. Yeah, um, if I understand you, um, you're saying there's actually, there's on one side, there's spirituality, religion, science. And on the other side, there's a, a religious attitude, a religious thinking. Um, and that's where I think sometimes we get confused. Mm -hmm. So you can be in, in a religious attitude, a religious thinking attitude with all levels, with science, with with religion with spirituality in all these three different domains you can be in an in, in, in an attitude of religious thinking i think that's that's what you were saying yeah okay you you next uh, thank you Dennis. Uh, is clear yes uh you uh it's that it's about the dogmatic thinking a uh, way of thinking yeah From religious uh in a way, is uh, the content is quite uh, irrelevant. You can have a religious uh, uh, tendency or, or relation with anything. You know, yeah. to be a bit, uh, and I know it can it can sound a bit of paradox, paradox, but uh, you can have a religious relation with the philosophical practice, for example. Why not? Yeah. You see the problem here because it's not the philosophical just because uh, it's uh, about philosophical practice but you it's more the attitude the way you relate with the practice that makes makes it more philosophical than religious yes yeah okay so you, you have another way to distinguish or you you drop it i think i'm gonna drop it <laughs> <laughs> okay okay but Let's see if uh, maybe somebody want to help you or or no. Uh, I see just uh, Dennis now. Yeah, Dennis. Yeah, I want to pick up this point that Yunus made that I think a distinction um, between the two could be that religious religion deals with hierarchy, God and the creation and spirituality actually says that um, um, everything that's alive more or less is one so it deals with the idea of oneness and the oneness is is dispersed in all life so there's not no hierarchy uh, okay. maybe that so could the be distinction different. for you from between the two schemes is uh, the idea of hierarchy right yes so in in the religious there is hierarchy in the spirit yes. there is not right yeah yes okay but you can have a religious relation with uh, the idea of one to be one or the unity or no sorry do you think it's possible any way to have maybe not always but in some cases in many cases to have a religious relation with the idea of unity or the experience of unity or let's say the idea of to be one like you said uh, yes, but I think that if it becomes a religious relationship, then you make a hierarchy of it automatically almost, that, that one becomes sacred. Ah, okay. So, okay. And let, let me, I'm, I'm asking myself, I'm asking the group as well. So, it, basically, from your idea, there is not religious or religion without hierarchy, right? 
Yes. Okay, so I was uh, wondering now if it's possible to have a religious a religion uh, without hierarchy. Maybe let's try. Let's see if someone want to try to. It, to... it looks like it's the same: religious meditation and spiritual med meditation. They both. They both are. Uh, have this uh, limit of God in one case and absolute in the other case. Okay, but do you agree with uh, Dennis, uh, Natasha, that uh, religion imply a certain hierarchy always? Yes, with uh, with uh, creator at the top being the limit. Okay, so you agree with him, yeah? Overarching, overarching, yeah. Okay, let, just to, for, because I'm curious, there is someone who disagree with this idea? Okay, I see Matthias. Okay, Matthias? Uh, yes, I disagree with it if we're talking about having a religious attitude to something. I think this hierarchy, it, it fits more if we're talking about kind of official religion where you have a system of beliefs, you have hierarchy. But if, as you say, we can have a religious attitude to science or to philosophical practice, or even you can have a religious attitude to atheism, you can be very dogmatic, then I don't think there's the necessity of a hierarchy. It's just that you, you um, approach something as being sacred and really you have a strong belief in it that it's somehow related to the truth mm -hmm. real and you see it as the main focal point of your life maybe this is what i need to do this is what i must follow and let's say you have a religious attitude towards science it doesn't mean that you think that science necessarily can explain everything but you think silence is by definition the best way of explaining the world no other explanation can come near it because the science is is in itself you know the best we can ever have so then i don't know if there's a hierarchy the hierarchy would be that you say okay this is the best this is the top but that that would be the attitude okay philosophical practice okay philosophical practice is the best way of talking to people, philosophical practice is the best way of understanding someone. Nothing else comes near. Then you make it into a religion. This is the thing that everyone should do because it's the best. Okay. But yeah, let me translate in an Italian way. It's a bit more aggressive. So basically you're accusing Dennis that uh, his idea of religion is a bit, uh, I mean, he is in a way is uh, restricting the idea of religion is an in institutional way more than uh, in a relational way to have, have anything or so something? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, let me check because... <laughs> Dennis, are you, do you have this uh, institutional conception of religion? Um, yeah, I thought we were talking about this now, yeah. And, but it doesn't matter because I, I think Matthias proved that the attitude, the religious attitude, um, does imply hierarchy because you think it's the best if you if you think that science is the only way to explain everything you put science on the top and the rest is above and is lower and is beneath it if you think practical philosophy is the way to go you put it at the top so it's a hierarchy again so i think religious thinking by definition is a hierarchical thinking yeah so, uh, Dennis, you are not speaking just about uh, institutional hierarchy, but also about, let's say, uh, uh, values hierarchy or ideas about hierarchy, right? Yeah, the same principle applies. Yes. Oh, so, uh, but that uh, okay. But in that case, I would say that uh, every time you think something, since you distinguish something, there is some kind of hierarchy, right? Yes. Yes. So you see the problem is a bit indifferentiated. It's not just uh, religion. Is every time you say something or you or you make a choice or you you create a distinction, you are doing that uh, from a, a certain hierarchy, even if you're not aware about it. Um, if you're in religious thinking, you do it. Yeah. 
if you're in in rational thinking you're open because you think okay this is good but maybe that is also good so then you leave the hierarchy because you're open to others perspectives uh, okay uh, but, okay but in i have the impression that when you speak about the let's say uh philosophical or critical thinking you are a bit uh, bringing this idea of relativism where there is no let's say uh, hierarchy and uh, any ideas any values can work um with rational thinking anything can work if it meets certain logical or rational criteria of course or other evidence but you're open to it and if it's but in a rush or in a religious mode no you 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 stick with what you what you okay decide. so again the relation with the hierarchy it's not the hierarchy itself you agree sorry again is more the re how you relate yourself with this hierarchy than the, the fact that there is a certain hierarchy because for example in perspectivism you see the world from different perspective and maybe even very different perspective makes sense at the same time yeah but there is but still there is some hierarchy so is the way you approach the hierarchy that make the difference between a religious scheme and a philosophical one you no, that? that's not my my point is that once you're in religious thinking mode then you're in a hierarchical hierarchical mode then you think one is better than the other once you're in a rational mode then you leave that that thinking and then there is no hierarchy you're open to everything yes and yeah then... then it's yes i yes, understood your point uh, i wanted to yeah deepening a bit because uh, even in the perspectivism which is a bit the the idea of philosophical practice behind let's say yes uh, you can let's say make make sense you can uh say that different perspective sometimes even even contra contradictory perspective makes sense but mm -hmm. still you have some preferences is yes. uh, 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 so when you have a preference it means that there is a hierarchy there you agree yes, yes. yeah okay. so the point i was proposing to you is that the hierarchy is uh, there anyway both in critical thinking uh, and in the religious thinking probably the difference could be the way you relate with that hierarchy in one in one you make uh, that hierarchy absolute and you believe in uh, that 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 uh, that idea or that point of view is uh, uh, let's say the right one mm -hmm. in the other one you just say okay i prefer this one but i see the point of the other one anyway yes yeah okay so you agree is a relational uh, the relation that make the difference yeah yeah okay and i think that was the matthias point by the way yeah i don't know okay let, let's check <laughs> matthias uh is that your part of your point or no mm, yes uh i think so it, it makes sense anyway so and yes i agree there is a hierarchy in in the attitude as well of religious thinking where you put something is better than the rest there is yes. Mm. okay 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 good uh i don't know if pa paula you raise your hand or uh, no okay oh, audrey was okay well, audrey yeah uh two things uh first uh the principle of uh, the argument of authority so in the moment that you you take an idea as an authority or a reference to someone or an idea, uh, yeah, as an authority, then you you enter the the, the religious uh, mode of thinking. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. And the second is that wait, wait, okay. to say, wait. Oh, sorry. sorry, because to before to go to the second point, you see this uh, let's say um, principle of authority in uh, I don't know in the Shamsi Matia position or why do you do you bring this uh, point I, I i i see the point but which is the relation with the, the topic and discussion i saw i saw this in uh, different explanation different explanations that uh, guys gave and uh, yes so i wanted to propose this uh, 
expression, this concept of argument of authority, and I connect it to the idea of hierarchy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So concerning uh, religious thinking. Yeah. So religion is not only a religion. Religious thinking is not only about institution. Uh, it's also, uh, also a relation, uh, like you said, uh, to uh, to uh, perspective. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's okay for this point. Yeah. So basically, the idea is that uh, when you have a re religious uh, re uh, relation with uh, uh, a perspective, uh, you are in a way uh, or, or some or somebody you are in a authoritical principle. So you think that that's the truth and that becomes the authority or no? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the second one? The second one uh, is uh, to say uh, that uh, we can do anything with reason. It's uh, a dogmatic uh, positioning, dogmatic view of uh, philosophy practice, you know. And uh, it could be more reasonable to say that sometimes it doesn't work. No. That was, yes. Maybe often could be a, the right middle way because sometimes it's a bit weak <laughs> to be philosopher. What? Say it again? No, I was proposing that you said sometimes you can do with reason, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can do a lot with reasons, but Maybe sometimes it means that you don't that <laughs> distrust so much in reason, which is a bit uh, maybe a problem if you're a philosopher, right? No. Okay. No. So you uh, believe? No, no. Okay. So you it's, have to. Uh, it's good. That, it's good that sometimes uh, uh, reason works, right? Ah, uh, let's say most of the times reason works. Yes, yeah, surely. But uh, yeah, in some cases we have to accept. Uh, the limit of uh, of its exercise. Yeah. Okay. So, my, but in that case, in, in, which means that that you think that in most cases it works. Yeah, we can say that. Yes. Otherwise, if you say just sometimes, maybe you you, you would do something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you, Dre. Paula, what, what do you think? I didn't hear you uh, so far. Um, yeah, I followed uh, your argument about the, the relationship within hierarchy, with hierarchy instead of hierarchy itself being the difference. And I agree. What I was thinking before when you were talking was the experience we had with Marta and Oscar and her religion religious relationship with um, emotions. So I relate that to the difference between spiritual and religious meditation. And I was thinking that maybe the, I would call spiritual meditation like consciousness meditation instead of spiritual. And um, because Oscar didn't deny the existence of emotions, he just denied, he just um, showed Marta that the religious relationship with emotions is um, um, is bad for you. Okay, it's bad for thinking. It's bad for uh, for reasoning. But he didn't deny the existence of emotions. Mm -hmm. So be so he he made her conscious of the fact that she has emotions and he has a religious relationship with emotions, believing that emotions are her god. Yeah. Without okay. saying they don't exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, indeed uh, that uh, Marta's consultation was a nice example of uh, religious relation with emotion. Yeah. And by the way, let, let's check if uh, Shamsi accepts your name about the third category. Uh, Shamsi, uh, Paula is proposing awareness uh, uh, meditation. Yeah. Yeah, awareness, consciousness, meditation. Consciousness. Oh yes, consciousness, awareness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem uh, very uh, liking this. Uh, Shamsi, do you like it? Um, do I like it? Uh, consciousness meditation. I mean, consciousness is uh, 
it's an it's not an adjective it's rather than sub well yeah okay that, that means no shamsi right no no I, I just i'm 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 i mean to me it's just another label if if you feel more comfortable with it i don't i mean it's not that i i wouldn't say no to it but it's not like hey yeah that's the the word that i was looking for okay so okay so it's not the but even because I see a problem, I, I, I understand the Paula's point, but I see a problem because uh, awareness and consciousness is implied also in the other types of uh, meditation. That could be a problem to, to name yeah. just the third one like that, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So one, one could call it maybe non-duality meditation, yeah, if, if you don't like spiritual. Non okay. Meditation. So, Paula, nice try, but uh, Shamsi, even if he's a polite guy, didn't like it, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I see a virtual hand of Natasha. Natasha, you want to speak? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, I just uh, I just had this uh, inside of some kind of option. Uh, religious meditation and spiritual meditation, which I also think it's better to call it consciousness, or the nation. anyways they have different uh, emotions you can distinguish them because in religious meditation uh, it's gonna be or pity reverence very very high emotions of it of attitude like uh, reverence and uh in spiritual it's more pleasure maybe gratefulness so different types of emotions okay natasha i don't know if i was the only one uh, to have a uh, like a misconnection but i would the same uh all the group didn't hear okay so i think you have uh, a connection problem natasha i thought it was mm -hmm. me but it, it seems to be you and let, there is someone who understood something. Uh, I mean, the, the main idea or no? Maybe Sha Shamsi, yeah. Yeah. So what I understood from Natasha is that she says that there that the main difference is the quality of emotions between religious and meditation and spiritual meditation. So in religious meditations, about awe and um, maybe blissful state. No, not blissful. Bl not blissful. Oh. Reverence, pity, some like this, gratefulness as well, and in spiritual is this. Is this okay, Shabzi, I I I I didn't understand. Can can you <laughs> say again? Yeah. So so she she did she um her, she proposed a distinction between religious and spiritual meditation based on the quality of emotions. So in religious meditation, she proposes the idea of um, reverence and even uh, gratitude and awe, whereas in spiritual meditation, it's more about bliss. So there's a distinction in the quality of emotions between these two concepts. Uh, okay. And since we were discussing with you that, do you accept this distinction, Shamsi, or no? Yes. Okay, it makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, okay. But le let me uh, push a bit to go back to the, let's say, original criticism <laughs> by Matthias. Um, so you, you still think that you don't have a, a religious relations uh, relationship with uh, meditation, right? Because you, you, you reckon you, you place yourself in the... In, in which category? The third one? Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's your position. Yeah. You you keep that position. Yeah. So far. Yes. Okay. Okay. Matthias, uh, do you do you drop your uh, criticism or you want to explain it better or you want to raise, let's say? <laughs> um no, I'm not going to drop it, but let's see if uh, I have some ideas. First of all, um, yes, again, I think uh, 
if we look at Shamsi's list, we should differentiate between types of meditation and attitude towards meditation. So it's possible to have a re religious attitude towards spiritual meditation if you believe that this is the meditation, the only one. Or you can have a religious attitude towards secular meditation and you think the rest is rubbish, this is the one. So that would be a difference you can have. You can just be religious in your attitude towards spiritual meditation. Then as well, I think it's a bit of hair splitting here, the difference between religious and spiritual. For I've I've seen, I don't know, maybe Shamsi can explain it later, but I, I've noticed uh, reluctance generally among Buddhists of calling themselves religious. They seem not to like to be classified as religious people. They prefer to be spiritual. But here it seems like the, the, the difference here between spiritual and religious, I don't find it very to be very strong. And here what it and, and again in religious meditation there's much so much focus on God, unification with God, or interpret experiences regarding God. But but my point was that okay, you don't need to have God included in this. It could be it could be a religion, you know, which is more of a spiritual nature, where you have experiences which are kind of otherworldly. They don't need to relate it to a god, you don't need to relate it to a higher being. But so I would I would argue that you can have a religious experience with nature, even if you don't believe in God. Maybe Shamsi would say, no, that's spiritual, that's not religious. Mm -hmm. But I think the differentiation he makes here between spiritual and religious is rather fine. And I don't I, I don't know if it's you know, such, such a big difference here. So I'm a bit skeptical to this this um, effort to try and you know, separate religion from spirituality. Okay, so again, let me translate an Italian way. You know, <laughs> you're saying that uh, to use this uh, the word uh, spiritual is a smart way to say religious without without saying it, right? Uh, yes, why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, yeah, that was uh, your second idea, right? Oh no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like well, Buddhists, yeah, you 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 raised before uh, they they don't qualify themselves as religious, but uh, you, you think they are, right? Uh, yes. Okay. I I, I call it uh, religious. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not okay. Just I'm not doing it in a derogatory way. <laughs> You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I don't know it, you know, but okay. I, I would, yes, I would say it's a religion rather than a spirituality. I think spirituality is a way of, as you say, trying to weaken it, to try to escape the the label of being religious. So you call yourself spiritual instead. Okay, so based on uh, what uh, just Matthias said, uh, le let me ask you a few questions, Shamsi, if you if you <laughs> if you like. <laughs> First question, do you agree that it's possible to have a, a religious um, relation with the spiritual meditation? Yes, if we consider religious to be dogmatic about it, yes. Yeah. Okay, Okay. so we I think we all agree about that. Second question is a bit more personal. Do you think you have a religious <laughs> relation with the spiritual meditation? In terms that I'm dogmatic and saying that it is the best and everyone should do it, no. Okay, but you think it's the best, right? Well, what does it mean to be the best? It's no, a... I'm not saying that uh, he's right, but I'm saying you think that the third meditation is, let's say, the best one. No. Okay, which is the best one in your opinion? Or oh, there is not the best one? It depends on your goal. Okay. But uh, since you are practicing the third one, you, and I, I guess your goal is uh, uh, <laughs> putting you in that dimension because you think is the most best, I mean the best one for you. Yes, right? for me. Yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you don't think that in, since you 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 think that that's the best one for you, that implies a religious thinking. Uh, I, did I got get correctly? No, because then everything where I say this is the best one for me would be religious thinking, but then it's undifferentiated. 
Okay, so it's, it's not enough to say that since you you think that that's the best one, you are you have a religious tendency to that uh, position, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So you think in general it's possible, but it's not your case. Right. In this Come case, on. it's just a preference. Yeah. It's a pre so you know the way you place yourself more in a perspectivism, uh, right? So you yeah. see different uh, meditation, but you prefer one. But it doesn't imply a religious scheme, right? Right. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's give the opportunity to, to Matthias to maybe to add something about it because I don't know if he's ag he agrees or not. Yeah, with this last point, I agree with Shamsi. Just, just because you have a preference doesn't mean that you're dogmatic. Okay, but why you uh, then why you saw this religious uh, uh, tendency in Shamsi since you accuse him to, to, to have it? I don't think what I saw was the dogmatic side. It was more that I, the way he spoke about meditation, I felt that there was a religious vibe about it. Okay. Not so the dogmatic about vibe, but, but more of something which is beyond this world, something otherworldly, something experience which goes beyond, you know, normal, yes, perceptions or maybe conceptions. Rather. So it was this religious feeling I had about it more than dogmatic. Okay. Well, let me ask you, Matthias. Do you, do you think it's possible to have a, a relation with something you reckon is beyond word or language without uh, fall in a religious scheme? Uh, yes, I think it's possible. Uh, can, can you explain how it's possible or give an example? Well, you, if you say have a relation to it, you could investigate it. You could uh, just be interested in it and try to figure out what it is in a more detached way. So that, that could be a kind of relation to, to let's say, the, the, the more spiritual or religious type of meditation. It could be an interest for you. Uh, you don't have strong attachment to it. You don't feel very strongly about it. You just want to, you know, find out what it is about to be a kind of relation which is not religious okay so you agree with shamsi that uh, uh, not just philosophical practice can imply a perspectivism but also the meditation doesn't imply necessary an absolute uh, I, uh, idea or a relation or a religious scheme but it can imply like maybe in the shamsi position a perspectivist uh, dimension uh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be religious. You don't have to, you don't have to be religious about meditation. Yeah. Okay. So why do you think you had that impression in the Telegram chat? It was the way he spoke about it. This I I had. Yeah. Then when when he talked about this this non-dual experience which went beyond words and beyond interpretation and beyond concepts he, here um yes it, it was an impression it's difficult to explain exactly what, why but here i had an impression i had a feeling that he felt a bit in love with this this meditation that it wasn't just um let's say, an academic interest in it he wanted to investigate it it was more that it was something which was really important to him really something fundamental for him and which he wanted to share with our, others not necessarily to impose it on others but share his love with it love of it with others yeah that, that's the kind of religious attachment i i had a you know, an impression so let me propose you this idea that you didn't you you had that impression because you didn't see enough detachment from that experience right uh, yeah yeah. Okay. Um, uh, before to go to Audrey, I would like to check with Shamze. Um, is it surprising for you that uh, maybe some other people or other another person has had that impression about the way you speak about, uh, yeah, the way you said it? Or no. 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 Okay. Other people told you already. Oh. 
No, it's not that other people told me, but I understand Matthias. So mm. my first my first uh, posts were using these words such as, you know, go beyond words. And uh, also I introduced the idea of psychedelics. And for sure, it uh, can sound very religious, which is why I tried to clarify. But I definitely understand why one can see it or assume it. Okay, okay. So. Maybe, maybe that's why Plato preferred to discuss uh, uh, dialogue than uh, writing. <laughs> Because writing, uh, in a way, gives more opportunity to misunderstand each other, probably. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, Audrey, you raised your hand before. Yeah, if I, if I can say different things. Uh, one uh, is to complete, uh, to answer your question uh, you asked to uh, Matthias. Uh, The circumstantial aspect of uh, the writing, the message by uh, Shamsi, as well, could be could be taken in account, since he just when he wrote, he just came out, uh, came came back from. Uh, I won't give the name because I'm not a specialist. <laughs> Shamsi, I will let you say it. So yeah, or Denise, yeah, whatever. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so the fact that she just finished uh, the experience the experience of uh, this retreat uh he he wanted to 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 share something uh about his experience but then the difficulty was that it was beyond the words so words were not enough to 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 say the thing that's uh, yeah it will, it will complete the the feeling of uh, the search for absolute But we we felt yeah we had uh, reading uh, the messages, yeah. So circumstances, uh, the fact that it's beyond the words and uh, yeah, uh, what Matthias said as well. Uh, oh no, I'm not sure that you said it, but uh, the fact that yeah, actually he, he showed yes you said uh, he showed a certain uh, let's say uh, I don't have a better word shall see but uh, some stubbornness in the positioning. Uh, yeah, uh, so three, at least three elements uh, to make us think that there was some uh, religious thinking. Yeah. And by the way, at the beginning of the session, you said that you saw this religious tendency in both of them, right? Yeah, more in Shamsi than in Matthias, I said as okay. well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, two people uh, have this impression. Um, but Shamsi, do you have the impression that uh, often or sometimes people in the, let's say, IPP group have a, a religious tendency to philosophical practice or no, just to, to for fun? I, um, not necessarily, well, not necessarily philosophical practice, but maybe to everything that Oscar does. So they have a religious, um, Yeah, relationship to us to to Oscar. So there is a, a spread the authority principle, like uh, Audrey was saying before, in the in the group. Let's say, yeah, yeah, like a like a guru. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but like we said before, it's possible to have a religious dimension uh, or the relation with uh, every everything and ev anybody in a way. Yeah. And so uh, you see this uh, is, you think is most of the people or just a uh, few people? Uh, I would say it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a few. Probably the longer one stick with Oscar, the more one gets affiliated with this kind of thinking and with his uh, opinions and thoughts and these kind of things. Yeah. So Dre is a religious woman, right? <laughs> there's at least yeah i know yeah, i received that uh, observation yeah. Yeah. okay Quite, so uh, yeah several times uh, 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 Audrey, uh, uh, already some some someone else uh, told you yeah yeah some people uh, yeah you know i've been doing it for uh, 18 years so yeah so yeah i know a bit uh, the so family. you are part <laughs> of uh, the oscar sect Right. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I've heard about uh, the sect. Uh, even uh, I was treated, uh, accused of being a little ant of Oscar, and yeah, 
So th this kind of things. Okay, no, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I literally tra uh, translated it because we we say it in French uh, that we uh, when we follow someone and kind of religiously uh, or we do uh, anything for him, uh, we are like an ant, like an ant uh, for him, like ants. You know, little ants that they, they, they go to that they, they work together and so on. Yeah, uh, uh, Paola, I don't know if uh, I, I see that you, you understand the, the French. You are an ant, an ant that does a philosophical practice. Yeah, yeah. But and do, you, hands. do you agree with Sham's impression or other people's impression that to, uh, who told you already or no? Yeah, somehow I can agree with him. Yeah, but I, I, I want to defend myself against that, of course. But so, yes, uh, I can I can see. Uh, I can understand why uh, people say that, have this feeling, uh, and yeah, there are good arguments to uh, to defend this uh, uh, this uh, accusation. Yeah, and uh, yeah, well, I think I'm not okay, but uh, uh, yeah, I can understand. It's it's quite obvious. Also, you disagree then? But yeah, uh, I work on that because I'm I'm really afraid of that, you know. I don't want to be uh, in the religious uh, functioning, okay? So yes, I, I work in the negativity on, uh, of uh, philosophy practice and uh, the, the, the atmosphere around Oscar and so on. Uh, so yeah, I can uh, take distance and uh, uh, yeah, I do different things. I do sports, you know, and I'm coach in sports, I'm co uh, sportive coach. And uh, yeah, I, 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 these days I develop some projects that are not really, really philosophical, but use philosophy practice, but are not philosophical completely. So yeah. So yeah. So I take my freedom, let's say. But at one moment I can uh, admit that uh, the phenomenon was cruel than uh, now. Yes. Uh, became a bit mature, uh, mature by that. Relating to that. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So Chant witness, witness yeah. about uh, yeah this experience. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I it's a bit ambiguous because uh, she said okay she understands you but even if uh, she thinks that uh, she is not right much she has been in uh, sometimes. What what do you think about her answer? <laughs> yeah, I can I can definitely relate to it and um, I think just being aware of the potential threat to become one of these ends and therefore working against it is I I in my eyes a good way to not be not to succumb succumb to this kind of yeah um sectinism or whatever the, the noun is here. Yeah. So I think it's a good way to be aware of it and to do something against it. Yeah. And if uh, I would like to share my uh, own experience about that because uh I had, have to admit that uh, now, if I think uh, like in the last years, uh, in many in many periods, especially when I was uh, a bit uh, doubt uh, doubtful about myself, uh, or I'd, uh, I had I the, had the the need to believe in the practice. Let's say, yeah, because you know, Shamsi, it's not easy to do this practice, especially outside the IPP. <laughs> you can have many problems. So in a way, uh, if you don't, sometimes can be annoying. Sometimes you can uh, say to yourself, but why I'm keeping doing it if I have many problems in my life? And this brings more problem than uh, fun, let's say. So in that moment, I have to admit that uh, I needed to believe in the practice. Otherwise, I would, uh, I would have fear to drop it, yeah? So in a way, I propose the idea that uh, re religious thinking is not necessarily bad. Sometimes uh, you need it in order to keep going, in order to, yeah, even to try to avoid or to overcome some obstacles of in your life in order to go on with what you like anyway. That is at least is my experience so far. So in some periods, I, I, I found myself more religious with the practice than in other period, but I I think uh, it's not uh, just me. I think it's quite normal experience. Andrea, I would say that it's a bit about trust. It's yeah. about trust, confidence, self confidence. Yeah. Not believing. Yeah. It, but, uh, yeah. If it is about believing, it could be true. Uh, by the way, uh, concerning you, because you have this, but it's something different. 
you know, but self-confidence to keep on in the effort of doing something. Yeah. And uh, See, yes. And uh, about the the idea of Oscar, Shamsi, let me add this, that uh, I think that Oscar in a way is uh, that one who trusts more in uh, reason than anybody in the group, right? And I, I let's say I trust I trust the reason, but maybe less. So sometimes in order to, to go on, I need to trust him in order to trust more reason. Yeah, <laughs> at least that's what I observe in myself. So yes, I, I agree with you. But in, in also in a, a school, you know, uh, uh, in a teaching, I think is uh, believing is an important part of the process. There is a, especially at first, uh, the student, if doesn't believe the, 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 the teacher, uh, it's difficult to learn something from him. So there is a time to believe, let's say, and there is a time to question that belief. But if you never believe, uh, I, I would say it's very difficult to become good in anything. That, that, Are you that preaching something, Andrea? Preaching something? Are you preaching something? Yes, yes, no? What, no? what do you mean? Wait, wait. What do you mean? <laughs> well, uh, you, you seem to be enthusiastic about what you're saying just now. <laughs> no, like, I'm uh, as if there was uh, some God who was speaking through you. Yes, something. No? Oh, I, I'm in a religious king, you say, you're saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but just now, no, no, you feel uh, you're not transported, but what you're saying. No, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. I, maybe, yeah, it's true. I think it's, I think it's because I, I, it's the first time I, I thought in the, this clear way what I just told, I just shared. So yeah. I, I had the impression maybe before that to be in a religious scheme is just bad. But now I realize that uh, it's not necessary like that. That's why maybe I was thinking so and was a bit inspired in that moment. Yeah. But you, you, you said that concerning your students, they must believe in what the teacher says. It's, well, I usually I, I, I try to teach them not to believe me and to question me all the time. Yeah. But I have to admit that uh, I noticed that trusting <laughs> and believing is, uh, is important in the teaching in the teaching process. And I, 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 I see that many students believe me and thanks to that belief, they, they can learn, they can reach some uh, experience. Hi, Matthias, bye. I oh, know, it's Shamsi, yeah. So, yes, Audrey, uh, yeah, there is a... Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I feel like you're trying to convict yourself. I'm convinced. I'm trying to convince him myself. Convince, yeah, convince yourself. Yeah, maybe that's why religious is important. When you are, uh, we are weak, you need to, to to feel or to become stronger, and you try to to convince yourself. Yeah. And others, and others at the same time. What? And others as well. And others. Oh, you are saying that I'm trying to convince others in order to convince myself. Mm, no, both processes. Ah, okay, okay. But you are familiar with this experience or no, Natasha? Mm -hmm. So you, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, is something private or you can share? No, it's not private. I, I'm just thinking of what way I did that. Okay, I will get an idea and I hmm? think it's it works. It's from experience. It works. I think it works. I haven't tried it yet. But just knowing the process, I think this process is familiar. This process will work. This in all the total process is going to work. So then why uh, I try to uh, talk to people to explain what it is and how it will work. And it will be prof somehow will bring some result, good result. And this way I am convincing myself in the, in the same thing. Yeah, okay, but you agree yeah, that believer yeah. is uh, an important part of the learning process, or no? And learning and also uh, successful working in some kind of project. <laughs> I got tired of that at certain time. Okay. Time. Okay, but let, let's try to go to the conclusion. Yes, Matthias? No, I just want to add that, yes, indeed, religious thinking is uh, sometimes necessary 
in science, for instance, you, you cannot question everything. Some some things you have to accept, like some methods you have to accept, some paradigms you have to accept, some ways of working, some hypotheses you have to accept. If you question everything, not, not, nothing's going to happen. So an element of religious thinking of absolutism needs to be there, but it cannot take over completely. That's... Yeah, I agree. Yeah, let, let me uh, give you this example, Matthias, that uh, I was teaching uh, um, swimming as well uh, a few years ago. And of course, if you if you teach someone to, to swim and this guy is questioning everything you said, this guy is not going to learn how to swim <laughs> never. Yeah. So at first, these all these people had to trust me, to believe me, even if maybe sometimes I could um, said any any something wrong or any mistakes. But it, without that belief, these guys couldn't learn how to swim. Yeah. You know, I agree with Matthias, with Matthias um, uh, regarding something we need to believe, just to believe, to do, to go on. It's just because not everything is defined, not everything is certain, certain um, uh, which lots of things are, unknow are still unknown to us. And in order to ground something on something, we need to have something outside our reasoning something in uh, outside somewhere which could be uh, just trust it's and it is a belief we believe okay it's, uh, religious. okay so you agree with my what matsia said yeah mm -hmm. okay okay uh so i would say we can conclude uh, uh, if uh, someone want to add the last comment I think it's funny that when you ask your students to question you, you ask them to believe you, basically. Yes, exactly. Yes. In a way, yes. So because if uh, someone uh, of my student think that uh, that's not the right way to learn, it's not, uh, you, you're not supposed to question the teacher. Uh, yeah. So in a way, they, don't, they wouldn't trust me. And so they, they believe in what I'm saying. So in a way, there is always a certain belief dimension when you speak or when you yeah when you trust someone yeah yeah so in a way it's impossible to eliminate completely the, the religious right. skill right. but like matthias said before the problem is not to let maybe the religious thinking to overcome or to take over the critical dimension in that case could could be a problem for thinking of course yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah. if uh, nobody has okay audrey yeah, uh, I wouldn't call it uh, believing. I would call it uh, uh, rather certitude. Uh, for example, I, I saw myself uh, during these years of uh, practicing, uh, learning things and uh, then uh, training. And uh, when I started to train, I uh, started as well to think that uh, I knew something. Uh, it was quite certain. And uh, then when I was coming back to seminars, uh, I was sure what I was proposing in the seminars. And uh, then uh, there was a good argument against. And uh, so I had to to, uh, to to forget about my certitude. And then, yeah, so I think it's more about certitude that sometimes installs itself uh, in your um, in your knowledge. And uh, it's not about belief. But it can become belief but uh yeah let's say that uh, what is necessary let's say necessary because we cannot avoid it it's certitude is to think that what you think uh, what you learned you think it as a something definite and uh, that you can transmit as something certain and so on uh yeah certitude uh, would be would be better uh yeah but, uh, uh, Adre, would you place uh, the certitude more in the religious uh, category or in a critical philosophical category? More in the religious uh, okay. side. Yeah, because normally yeah, when, you are, when you use your critical mind, you don't take anything for certain. But uh, we, it's, it's a limit. Let's say it's the limit between okay. the critical... Uh, thinking and uh, okay so i mean i would propose let, let's leave that distinction there because it could be 
uh, interesting to develop. Now we don't have the time between the certitude and the religious dimension. Okay. Yeah, but to say to say something last thing, uh, I think it's interesting to go back to the the, the wisdom tales, uh, Sufi tales, Buddhist tales, uh, and uh, yeah, Zen tales and so on, uh, because there are uh, some stories that uh, would illustrate our uh, today's discussion. For example, uh, I think about uh, the man who the Sufi tale, the uh, the man who was walking on the water, for example. Uh, or the Buddhist tale, uh, the, the the goldsmith uh, about meditation. So yeah, the, these two story for the stories, for example, yes. So uh, yeah, I invite you to to go back to these stories and to yeah to to, to deal with the questions. And uh, I think that uh, everyone would uh, find some answers. Okay, so indeed, yes, to read some stories, some tales could be especially from the East culture could be interesting to deepening a bit this topic and uh, feel free to share your comments in telegram chat if you have uh, some something more to say and i think we can conclude here thank you it was it's been funny thank you for matthias to accept the this rational battle with shamsi <laughs> and see you next time i don't know when but see you Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.